Well, today is the day for the review for the ROG Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard from Asus. This is, this is long overdue. Although, we've had a few videos out featuring this motherboard, including an NVMe RAID video on X470. This motherboard is really probably the highest end, the most premium motherboard that you can get for X470. It has a ton of features. Most people are not gonna use the features that it has. But if you want the absolute highest end, this is probably it for X470. And I don't say that lightly because Asus has done literally everything with this motherboard. Like the Crosshair Hero 6 was okay-ish. The Crosshair Hero 7, Asus is return to glory. I mean, it's Asus. You expect Asus to deliver a really high-end product. That is the expectation. This is that. So what makes a really high-end delivery for X470? And what do I mean? It's like most of the, the features on this motherboard are features that, that nobody will use. We'll get to that. Let's talk about the standard stuff on the motherboard review, motherboard layout first. The motherboard layout on this is really, it's very good. There are two M.2 slots, both of which go through the CPU. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. We've got two physical by 16 slots that can run in a by eight by eight configuration or in a by four configuration by eight by four. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you've also got another by 16 slot that's running through the chipset as PCI Express 2.0 by four. So that runs through the as media controller. The power delivery on this system, Asus calls uh, Extreme Engine Digi Plus, but you know, for X470 as it exists today with Zen Plus, it does not really matter all that much in terms of power delivery. It, it has a completely fine, more than adequate power delivery system, which is probably gonna be suitable for the next two, maybe three generations of AM4 CPUs. It will run the fastest 2700X that you can buy. Like if you, if you win the golden lottery and it has the most amazing 2700X CPU in the world, this motherboard will have no problem powering that at any overclock that you can get the, to run that would be stable. Of course, the caveat there is that, you know, 4.35 gigahertz is the top end unless you want to start getting into base clock overclocking. So power delivery system, more than adequate. So enough of that. Let's get into the rear IO of this motherboard. We've got a BIOS clear button and a clear CMOS button. Now the, the BIOS flash button thing is very important, I think, on AMD CPUs because it's such a long lived uh, platform or AMD motherboards, I should say, not CPUs. AMD motherboards are so long lived that you could get a CPU and just upgrade your, you know, upgrade your system with a new CPU, but you need to be sure that the motherboard supports the CPU before you put the CPU in it. Not every motherboard will let you upgrade the BIOS from a USB stick without a CPU. And so there was a little bit of a kerfuffle when the 2000 series Ryzen CPUs came out and they were compatible with you know, the X370 and the B350 boards, it was possible to buy a CPU that would not boot on an older motherboard until the motherboard's software was updated. And so AMD solved that by sending out loner AM4 CPUs that were really low end in order to be able to upgrade your system. I think going forward, unless you just are masochistic, you should just look for this BIOS upgrade feature on whatever motherboard you're considering, whether that's AM4, Threadripper, whatever, because AMD is always gonna be coming out with new CPUs and it's nice to just not even have to think about it, especially if you're helping your friends build a system and it's like, oh, I accidentally bought a motherboard that doesn't support this CPU or that CPU. Not a big deal. You put the updated software on a USB stick, you stick it in, even with no CPU, you can totally update it, it's fine. This is the Wi-Fi version of the Crosshair Hero 7. So I've got two antennas for my Intel you know, two by two solution. That wireless solution also supports Bluetooth 4.2. Then below that, we've got our two USB 2.0 ports and our combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port. Then below that, we've got our bank of eight USB 3, USB 3.1 Gen 1, five gigabit connections. And then below that, we've got our gigabit LAN, which is an Intel Ethernet uh, 802. Or it's an i211AT. And then we've also got our as media, well, not as media, it's like the, the, the AMD built-in USB 3.1 Gen 2, one type A and one type C USB port. And then we've got our audio solution, which is, you know, Supreme FX S1220, that is based on a Realtek ALC 1220 codec, but it's Asus's special sauce implementation, which uses the ES9023 high definition DAC, and you know, it comes with Sonic Studio and Sonic Radar. 
Sonic Radar is pretty fun in games like PUBG. It's totally not cheating, probably. It's fine, it's totally fine. So yeah, neat. It does have an optical SPDIF port and the ports look to be gold plated and color coded. So that's a nice touch. Good job, Asus. The uh, motherboard also has a built-in IO shield. So there's no IO shield in the box. You just get the IO shield built into the back of the motherboard. And in our lovely fractal meshify case, it works totally perfectly. This video or this build is actually gonna be in some other videos. And so if we talk a little bit about our build for a second, I've got 16 gigabytes of error correcting memory installed running at 2933. I've got the Celsius S24 from Fractal. Now, just to be clear, I think the bundled coolers that come with AMD CPUs are completely fine. I'm doing some unholy experiments here. I think the S24, you don't really need for any 2000 series AMD CPU that exists right now. I think whatever cooler comes with the CPU is totally fine for your needs, for anything that you could possibly want to do. This also has the Asus Strix GTX 1080. This is our cats per second graphics card uh, that we set up. It has a modest Cooler Master 500 watt, uh, 500 watt power supply, which is more than adequate for the system because again, we're not doing anything super exotic here. It also has a Toshiba uh, NVMe uh, drive, a 256 gig NVMe, which uh, works really, really well for for our purposes. We've also tested this in another video with a Samsung 960 Pro RAID to try to squeeze as much performance of this as possible out because the RAID stuff on this motherboard could be its own video. So in fact, we did some time ago. And this is the only X470 motherboard that I would recommend for NVMe RAID. And I've been hinting about that. So what's going on with that? Well, Asus has done something really awesome. So the first thing that you have to understand and I always talk about this in my motherboard reviews, but if this is, you know, if you're new here, welcome, hello, I'm Wendell. Um, I always talk about the PCI Express lanes because a lot of the time the motherboard designers, they cram a bunch of stuff on there, but there's some kind of a bottleneck if you actually go to try to use stuff. And on X370 and on every other X470 board that I've taken a look at so far, most of them have more than one M.2 slot. So AMD provides one set of PCI Express by four lanes direct to the CPU for NVMe type devices. It's up to motherboard manufacturers if they want to break that out into an expansion slot. Some motherboard manufacturers do that, but there's four PCI Express lanes that are provided for an NVMe connection. The second NVMe slot that appears on most other motherboards goes through the X370 or X470 chipset. So that's gonna be a PCI Express 2.0 connection through that chipset. First of all, even though it's PCI Express by four, it could be four lanes. But second of all, all of the other peripherals connected through the chipset are going to also go through that chipset connection from the chipset to the CPU, which is also a PCI Express by four interface. With those two PCI Express by four interfaces, Ryzen has an additional 16 PCI Express lanes. Those are usually used by your graphics card or two graphics cards in a by eight by eight configuration. So what Asus has done here is they give you the option of splitting that second uh, by eight slot into by four by four. So you could run a graphics card, a PCI Express by eight, and then the other slot will be PCI Express by four, and your second M.2 is gonna be PCI Express by four, PCI Express 3.0, so there's no bottleneck. But you're gonna give up eight lanes of connectivity on your GPU, which for most 99.9% .9 of scenarios is not going to affect gaming performance or anything like that. In fact, we did the tests. It's like, let's run GTA 5, let's run GTA 5 and do all this other stuff. There was no real performance penalty when switching the graphics to GTX 1080 Ti from by 16 to by 8. Now the, the bad news is that you don't get to run it at by 12. <laughs> That's not a thing. So it's like, oh, I just want to run my M.2 RAID and have a single graphics card. Sorry, that other PCI Express by 16, the middle slot is going to be enabled at PCI Express by 4. So what can you do? But that's good if you've got a capture card or something like that that's really high performance, like a 4K 60 FPS capture card. Totally don't stick that in a slot that goes through the DMI. That'd probably be good. Some other high-end features on this motherboard that I'll mention real quick while we're talking about that is also the water pump stuff. So it has a water pump flow sensor and an in and out temperature sensor. And this thing is designed for closed loop water cooling. And I think Asus has their eye on the future. Uh, you know, even high-end water cooling is not going to help you overclock a, a Ryzen 2000 series desktop CPU because 
the, the software is not there yet. I mean, maybe someday we'll get there with fully unlocked XFR2, or if we know what sort of black magic voodoo XFR2 is doing and we can replicate that, then maybe. Asus for its part has done some really amazing things in their UEFI. They have some unique features in their UEFI around overclocking. They also loaded memory uh, presets and profiles from the Stilt, which is you know, famous overclocker, expert dude. And uh, they give you access to all of that in the UEFI. And so it will help you auto overclock and it will help you find the right sort of dialed in settings for your you know, Ryzen 7 2700X. So if you're building the highest end Ryzen 7 system that you possibly can, this motherboard will help you. But I think that it's really a testament to AMD that you know, you can save money and get a cheaper board. You can get a cheaper board from ASUS that doesn't have those features and it will work fine and you'll still get 99.9% .9 of the performance that you would from this board with all that exotic overclocking stuff. That said, in terms of like the boards that you see online that are hitting 4.5 gigahertz with the Ryzen 7 2700X, this motherboard and its fancy beat clock overclocking there's another thing that this motherboard has that's kind of unique and that it, has, it does dual B-clock overclocking. So with this motherboard in the UEFI setup for this, you can actually run dual base clocks, which again is a very, very unique and very high-end feature. I think that that will probably make more sense with the um, Zen 2, the coming CPUs. In terms of front panel I.O., you've got the front panel USB Type-C header, as well as a USB header that will give you two USB 3.1 Gen 1, that's five gigabit per second, USB ports. There's also a plurality of USB 2.0 headers for running USB 2 peripherals, the aforementioned RGB headers, and a number of other you know, overclocking headers and that sort of thing. It also supports liquid nitrogen 2 mode, so if you're gonna run liquid nitrogen or you know anything exotic like that, Motherboard has you covered there as well, so whatever crazy stuff you want to do, you can totally do it. It's got a start button in the top right corner of the motherboard, which is nice and appreciated. Diagnostic LED code readout at the top of the motherboard, which is an awesome placement because if you've got all kinds of peripherals and stuff, you can see what the postcode is without it being blocked by all your add-in cards. So good job putting that at the top of the motherboard. That's nice, that's a welcome feature really well done it's, just, it's the little things asus it's the little thing it's the little it's the little things that's how i know you're paying attention so i see all the little changes and tweaks and stuff so that i know that somebody is listening and feels the pain of a diy system builder so good job good job nicely done in terms of fan headers this motherboard has eight four pin fan headers but it also supports the asus standard external fan breakout board so you can have additional sensors temperature sensors analog temperature sensors and additional four pin fan headers if you really want to control a large number of other fans. And the analog temperature sensor is something I gloss over sometimes, but you should definitely be aware of because you can actually get analog temperature probes and put them on whatever you want. It's literally a wire with a probe on it and just tape it to whatever you want to monitor the temperature of. And then your motherboard will totally do that. They even make, you know, like the, the, the water, like the closed loop you know, loop temperature monitor. You can totally do that as well and even have more, more than one of those if you want. As this is an ROG motherboard, which is funny that it's not Aries, kinda, GPP. I mean, I don't know, we're not supposed to talk about GPP. I mean, <laughs> well, I just said that, nobody told me to say that. That's not, I'm just, uh, somebody's gonna read into that more than, that was a joke. But ROG, so it's got the ROG header is where I was going with that. So like the USB overclock header thing, if you have that accessory, you can plug that into the motherboard. In terms of power input for the motherboard, for the CPU, that's 600 watts of input, one eight pin connector and one four pin connector for CPU power. So yeah, that'll, you know, there are thread ripper boards that have that much input power. So I feel like that's probably fine. And that's about all the nice things I can say about this motherboard. Now I've been using Linux on it extensively. We did our, our RAID testing on it and a couple other videos featuring this motherboard. So you should check those out if you're interested in that NVMe RAID feature for sure. Linux support for everything on this board was basically flawless, no issues. And the BIOS features really honestly, um, they're pretty good. I mean, sometimes there are some bugs around some features. There was a time or two that I had to use the search function in the UEFI to find where the heck a particular feature was. But all in all, it works well. And I'm really impressed with this board. I mean, like I say, this is one of the highest end X470 motherboards. If you're on a budget, I think that there's 
you know, most of the features that you need, you can get on boards other than this one. I mean, Asus has some, some perfectly awesome lower end boards that are not as complicated and high end and has, you know, like the water pump features and, and that sort of stuff that I, most people really don't need that. Most people especially really don't need extreme overclocking on the 2700X desktop. I mean, AMD is basically giving you the CPUs that can do everything that they can possibly do. I mean, they've, or look at it another way, AMD's really dialed in the binning. So the, the main reason that you would buy this motherboard is if you were looking to do NVMe RAID, in my opinion, or you just wanted the highest end X470 board, one of the highest X470 boards that you could possibly get with some unique features on the X470 platform for sure. So nicely done. It was a lot of fun to work on this motherboard and definitely good job Asus for all the little details. I mean, nothing really huge. It's just, you know, earth shattering, but they really dotted the I's and crossed the T's on this one. So if you picked up this motherboard or you want to share some other opinions or other experiences, <laughs> you know, like RMA experiences, uh, I don't know, come to the forums at Level 1 Techs. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.